tonight on Border Security. Officers are concerned this Canadian man may be up to a lot more than he's letting on. You're here for three days, so what are you going to do? Clubbing. Clubbing, yeah. Okay. It's possible the real reason for his visit is hidden in his suitcase. Michael. Yeah, there's something there. Border Force suspect there's more to this shipping container than meets the eye. Could be like a cover load just to hide what's sure. behind. Get me one of those out and I'll have a look what's inside. What they find will blow the lid off a massive criminal syndicate. We're thinking about four million. Wow, OK. Look, what's this? Why are you putting it in the chute? And biosecurity officers can't believe anything this man says. I asked you if you had any more. Border Force officers in Sydney have taken aside a passenger arriving from Canada who claims he is here for three days after his friend back home, Derek, bought him a ticket to Australia as a birthday present. Must be a very good friend, mate, to, uh, to pay for your ticket. Consider him my brother. Sorry? I consider him my brother. Okay, yeah. The brother I never had. Yeah. Documents the man is carrying reveal Derek has also paid for his hotel in the city for the next three nights. And Officer Shane is surprised to find he also has a credit card with Derek's name on it. So these are yours, but this is your friend's? Mm -hmm. A thorough bag search will be conducted as the man says his luggage has also been borrowed from Derek. And once opened, the contents immediately raise suspicion. Why the bag inside a bag? Maybe I'm going to buy a lot of souvenirs. The larger case contains very little other than another empty smaller bag. And there are growing concerns that this man may be here for more than a holiday. What do you know about things to do here? Like, well, like, you're here for three days, so, so what are you going to do? Clubbing. Sorry? Clubbing. Clubbing. A swab is taken from the lining of his large suitcase to check for traces of narcotics. That's a positive for cocaine. It's a strong result, and it may indicate the reason why this passenger is really here. Thousands of tonnes of cargo are imported into Australia every day. Criminal syndicates have been known to try and take advantage of this enormous movement of goods by using common shipping containers to conceal illicit drugs and smuggle them into the country. Today, in Sydney, trucks are hauling containers to the examination facility, where Border Force officers will ensure any illicit goods are stopped before reaching their intended destinations. The truck arrives on site, goes into the x-ray machine, it gets x-rayed, the image then gets passed on to the analyst area for it to be analysed. Officer Paul is examining an x-ray of this shipment from China. Concerns are raised as the consignment note description doesn't seem to match the actual contents. I've got the container details up. It's telling me that uh, this consignment should be dishwashers and gas cookers. Now, this is the image here. There's nothing like gas cookers. certainly doesn't look like gas cookers. No, so you've got two commodities there? Yeah, two commodities. The first three rows of the container are a clear contrast in appearance to the rest of the load. And officers suspect they could be a decoy for whatever is behind. Could be like a cover load just to hide what's sure. behind yeah, of course. in the container. Um, so I'm going to mark it up and refer it down to our examination team yeah. to go in and confirm the commodities. Just make special mention that it is a possible cover load in this circumstance and that we're really more interested in the uh, second commodity. Yeah, that's right. 
With serious concerns that the container is packed with an illegal load, this investigation must now be stepped up. The doors will be opened and a physical exam done of the commodity. When arriving in Australia, despite numerous warnings, many passengers fail to declare items that may pose a serious biosecurity risk. And when they are caught with high-risk goods... Oh, there's a cockroach. ..they all react differently. Wait, come on down! I'm you know? Stop swearing! Sometimes they get very emotional. <laughs> And sometimes they say nothing at all, like this Vietnamese passenger. But an X-ray of his belongings is causing biosecurity officers some concern. He's a non-declarant. He's filled out a Vietnamese IPC card, and he's got two large boxes that are showing organic material. So these things that we have to look at today. Hello, sir. You speak English? OK, you speak Vietnamese? Using a translation book, Officer Andrea tries to establish if the man's declaration is true and correct. Do you have anything to declare? No? Yes? OK. All right, I need you to open. Officer's attention turns to the passenger's two large boxes, and it's not long before a high-risk item oh. is discovered. It's pork. Pork. He is carrying pork floss, a meat product which could harbour diseases not found in Australia. But it doesn't end there. What's in the chute? What's this? Is this seeds for sowing? What are you going to do with this? What, what are you going to do? Is this to grow? OK. To grow. Why you put it in the chute? Seeds and meat products from other countries pose a huge biosecurity risk, and Officer Andrea has to be certain there are no more concealments. No more? You sure? To me, this doesn't make sense. I've come all this way three days to back money. This passenger arriving from Canada claims he is here on an all-expenses paid three-day holiday as a birthday present from his friend Derek. But Border Force officers are not convinced. After a swab test of his suitcase returned a strong positive result for cocaine. So we'll keep having a look around, see what we find. Yeah, we the case is immediately taken to be x-rayed as officers begin to search for any possible concealment of narcotics. The suitcase doesn't belong to him. It is tagged under Derek's name. He can't explain to us why there's reading into his suitcase. He claims he's not a user. Has your friend used drugs? Not on my eyes. The X-ray image of the bag shows some unexplained organic material around the base. Michael. Yeah, something there. Yeah, yeah, it is there. Following the high readings for cocaine, officers aren't taking any chances, and the suitcase is taken to the tool room for deconstruction as the passenger is read his rights. OK, can you tell me what I just told you? Repeat uh, it back to me. I don't have to answer your question, but yep. if I do, if I do, it can be used and will be used against me in the court. OK, OK. So you understand? Yeah. The lining of the case is lifted and there are signs that it may have been tampered with. So Officer Michael begins to drill into the base where the organic material could be seen on the X-ray. A powdery substance is revealed, but it's not immediately obvious what it is. So a second swab is taken and it's a surprising result. Border Force officers in Sydney have concerns that this man may be carrying narcotics after getting strong positive readings for cocaine off the lining of his suitcase. 
And now a second swab has tested positive for another illicit substance. That's uh, positive for ephedrine. Used to manufacture the drug ice, ephedrine is a prohibited import into Australia. We just have to go back in there and keep investigating and get to the bottom of this. Close inspection of the suitcase confirms there is no concealment. It is possible that the positive swab results were caused by recent contact with narcotics. Officers still have serious concerns about this passenger. The story's all over the place. Nothing's marrying up. He hasn't got anything on his body. Frisked him. Nothing in the bags. So basically, drugs not in our mind at the moment because we can't find it. Um, but we just want to know what the purpose of his trip at the moment, what's his intention. Border Force need to establish the real reason this man has travelled all the way to Australia for three days. And a card located in his wallet... There you go. ..may provide the breakthrough they are looking for. What are you going to do? Is this to grow? To grow? Why are you putting it in the chute? This Australian resident returning from Vietnam has failed to declare high-risk seeds he was carrying inside a heavily taped pair of shoes. But this is Vietnamese. No excuse. This is Vietnamese. You entered this in Vietnamese. You told me no. Seeds from other countries are a restricted import into Australia. With seeds, we don't know what kind of pathogens they hold or what disease they could bring into the country. Especially seeds like that, they've got no botanical names or anything. We have no idea what they are. They could be something that could be really detrimental to the environment, so we don't take any chances. In your pocket, any seeds? Concerned there may be other high-risk items stashed in his belongings, Officer Andrea continues her search. Just to make sure there's nothing in there. And there's just one more box in this gentleman's items that I need to have a look at. It's an actual cooker, and a lot of the times people use it for storage, but a lot of the times people could use it for concealments as well. As the box is opened, her fears are confirmed. There you go, some more seeds. Look, what's this? More. Why did you put it in here? There may be a language barrier, but that won't stop Officer Andrea from imposing a fine, as this appears to be a deliberate concealment. I asked you if you had any more. In Sydney, Border Force are opening a shipping container which they suspect may have been used to transport illicit goods into Australia. I think we just want to tunnel down this side. Probably only need to take two boxes wide. We don't have to go too deep. I think it's only third or fourth row in we're looking for. The shipment was declared to be dishwasher machines and gas cookers, but an X-ray of the contents indicated that the front rows are something very different to the bulk of the load. So that's clearly not a dishwasher. That looks like neck paper. Like uh, when you get your hair cut and they put the thing around you and wrap paper around your neck. We've, uh, we've had this a couple of times, but it's obviously not a dishwasher anyway. Officers suspect that the rows of paper products are a decoy, which have been strategically placed to conceal a second, potentially illegal commodity. How are we looking? Is that a change in commodity? Yeah. Pull those ones out of the top and get me one of those out and I'll have a look what's inside. No worries. They finally uncover the boxes behind the initial layer. And if their suspicions are correct, they could be about to blow open a massive international crime syndicate. This is a bag which appears to contain a box. Uh, similar size boxes to the other ones, but it's significantly heavier. So I suspect the other ones are just there to sort of cover up what they're really bringing in.
shoot your head anymore. This Australian resident returning from Vietnam has been caught making a false declaration about a large number of prohibited seeds he had concealed in his belongings. As he speaks very little English, a fellow biosecurity officer is brought over to speak to the man in Vietnamese to find out what the seeds are and why he has them. He was able to establish that these are a native vegetable grown in Vietnam and it looks like this passenger wanted to have them here, a bit of homeland to him I suppose, um, but unfortunately they're not allowed into the country. The passenger is also informed that he will be fine. Okay, I told him he got a message. Okay, good. Okay. The pork and seeds will be confiscated and destroyed. And with further explanation, it seems he has learned a valuable lesson. The gentleman's actually apologised, so I think he's realised what he's done, and um, I've indicated to his card that next time he really needs to declare, better still, don't bring these items into the country. You're best to leave them there and buy nursery stock from Australia. This passenger arriving from Canada claims he is here for a three-day holiday to go clubbing and buy souvenirs, all paid for by his friend Derek. But Border Force officers aren't entirely convinced. Listen, I'm just, I'm just down the back of the floor. We're just having a look at a passport. Are you able to examine the passport for us? They have ruled out narcotics, but as they continue their investigation, a card is located in the man's wallet, which may provide a clue. Services at horrorgambler.com. He claimed to us that he's a professional driving instructor, and he also has a business card, um, hire a gambler. And a check into his friend Derek's credit card, which the man is carrying, reveals further startling information. So the guy's car that Derek yeah. he's had 56,000 sent to him by three different entities from Australia. This year, 15 transactions, 56,000 to that guy. From these people. From these people. Does Derek, does Derek know anyone here in Sydney? Sorry? Does Derek know people here in Australia? That they have no idea. You have no idea? Officer Alicia then finds a text message on the passenger's phone telling him to go to the western Sydney suburb of Bankstown and visit the shopping mall there on Saturday. Who told you to go there? Not the one. The one who sent me here. Derek. And when you get there, what are you going to do? Shop for the souvenirs. Shop for the souvenirs. I have to get At a certain those. shop or...? Are you yeah, going to meet shop. someone, or has he given you a certain shop to go to? This shop's really good. No? It's all highly unusual, but so far the passenger has done nothing illegal. We've checked our intel, we checked it with all the people that deposit money to Derek. Um, they have no criminal activity um, on our records, basically. A check of his passport is also complete. Document examiner's had a look at the passport. Yep. The photo matches the chip. Okay. So that document, she's also done a manual examination of the documents. It's genuine. Mm -hmm. His friend Derek's credit card is seized by the Australian Federal Police, and the man is taken to immigration, where officers must now decide if he will be allowed to enter Australia today. Following a thorough inspection, Border Force officers are now sure this passenger is not carrying narcotics and the credit card belonging to his friend Derek has been seized. We're going to refer him back to Border Clearance. They're going to reassess the reason why he's coming to Australia. If someone comes and visits Australia, we just need to know that they can support themselves financially. He hasn't told us that he knows anyone in Australia, doesn't have any friends or relatives in Australia. So... That's why we have to refer him back to immigration. Immigration officers formally interview the passenger and a final decision is made. 
we still have residual concerns about his activities here, but we don't have enough evidence to form grounds to cancel the visa. We don't have solid, hard evidence of what he was actually planning to do here. At the container examination facility, Border Force officers are about to confirm if the concealed contents of this shipping container are part of an illegal smuggling operation. Cigarettes. Not declared. Obviously, there's a significant amount of duty and GST being evaded here. Officer William makes one more check to confirm the contents. Just opening up a box to make sure they are actually cigarettes. Smells like tobacco to me. With what appears to be an enormous load of smuggled cargo, the investigations unit is immediately called in. From the X-ray image, it looks like we've got about this much cover load. Yep. That much cigarettes. We're thinking about four million. Four million sticks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Officer Mary determines the titanic size of the shipment in order to calculate the total evaded duty. These goods are smuggled goods, undeclared tobacco. They have made a huge effort in evading duty and GST, defrauding the Australian uh, government by over $2 million just in this particular shipment. The monumental load of cigarettes will be seized, but that is not the end of this investigation. We will take all avenues that are available to try and identify who the organisers are um, behind these particular uh, shipments. 